Hey, what's going on guys? This is Ironhide X and today I'm going to be doing a guide on how to improve your gunnery um, in World of Warships. Just how to get better at shooting, how to Citadel ships, uh, know when to shoot armor piercing, when to shoot high explosive, when to shoot HE, how to get Citadels, um, what you should shoot at what different kinds of ships, when you should switch ammo types, and I'm going to explain the overmatch mechanic. So that being said, let's get right into it. So I'm in the Tier 10 Des Moines, and uh, I've got a, I lined up a whole bunch of different targets here in the training room. And this is situations you're going to run into quite often. So you have a Moskova or any other cruiser, um, and he's bow on to you like this. Now, because cruisers do not have big enough guns to overmatch the armor of other cruisers, if you fire AP at his bow like this, it's going to bounce off and not really do anything. You're not going to get any penetrations, and it's just it's not going to be effective. So anytime you run into a cruiser that's bow on like this, you're going to want to make sure you're shooting HE. And so you, uh, and then also, guys, anytime you have a bow on cruiser like this, don't really aim for the hole if you're in a cruiser. You're going to want to aim for the superstructure. Aim high. Aim high because that's where you'll get those uh, penetrations. Even if you use AP and whatnot, you're going to want to aim high. Uh, because, again, you shoot the hole, they'll just bounce off and not do anything. So you just want to keep peppering him with HE at this, uh, you know, at this range when he's bow on to you. Now, once he, you get to an angle with this guy where you can start shooting AP, then you're going to want to switch to AP. And so let's say for this Moskva... He's at a slight angle, but I think I could probably get through his armor. Because the Des Moines has really good AP rounds. And bam, there we go. You can start to Citadel. So, again, HE on bow on uh, cruisers. Uh, you, matter of fact, shoot HE at bow on battleships as well. Um, really, it's your, your only option in a cruiser. And, and lots of cruisers depend upon um, their HE capability. You know, setting ships on fire. And that's how they're going to get the bulk of their damage. Uh, that being said, every cruiser in the game, including including like the uh, the Russian flamethrower cruisers, you know, with their little 155 millimeter guns. So while they are flamethrower cruisers, they're called that for a reason because they're so good at sh uh, setting fires. Um, don't forget, you also have AP rounds. Even in the little 155 millimeter armed cruisers, if you catch another cruiser broadside to you, let's say like this Moskva here you're still going to sit at all them just fine. So even though it's known for being an HE cruiser, by all means, if you catch an enemy cruiser within, let's say, 15 kilometers, uh, maybe slightly shorter for one of the 155 ones, um, by all means, switch to AP and start hitting them with AP whenever they're broadside like this to you. Uh, like I said, even those smaller caliber uh, gunned cruisers can still AP... Um, and I will, uh, I'll will i generally shoot AP at them. It, you know, if I'm in, let's say, the choppy of, if they're within like 12 or 13 kilometers and they're broadside to you, then I, I'll, I will switch to, AA, to armor piercing uh, because you're just going to do a lot more damage. Now, another tip, <clears throat> excuse me, when you run into an enemy battleship like this, let's say the Yamato, regardless of his angle, um, what, you're, what I like to do, guys, is I like to hit them with HE, and uh, here, here's a tip when you're shooting with HE. So every ship in the game is broken up into four sections. You have like the bow section, you've got two middle sections, and then you have the stern section. Uh, each one of those sections can get its own independent fire going. And fire ticks based is a percentage of health per tick uh, per second. And so I have a fire going here. Now let's try to get another one going here. There's another one going there. So there's two fires on them. And so whenever you're shooting at, at targets, not actually, it doesn't even apply just to battleships, any target. If you're going to keep shooting AP at, or HE at them, sorry, you're going to want to keep hitting different sections of that ship to set multiple fires. Don't just keep hitting the same section. There we go. All four sections of his ship are burning. He, he at, at that rate, you know, he's going to be dead in no time. Now, once you do have the fires going, or let's say he's at an angle so you can't shoot all four sections of his ship. What I like to do, even against uh, battleships, is I like to switch to armor piercing. If you switch to armor piercing, you aim right up here flush with the deck and fire there, you're still going to do really nice damage, even against the biggest, toughest battleships in the game. 
So I like to get them burning, get them burning in multiple sections, and then switch to armor piercing. And when you do that, that's how you're going to get the, the your maximum da uh, damage that you possibly can. So quite often, though, you're not going to run into battleships that are showing you perfectly broadside. You're, you're going to get them at angles like, let's say, this curve first here. So when you get these, these battleships that are bow on or have sharp angles to you, Again, it's going to be real difficult to get multiple fires going on them, but still try to uh, try to still do that same trick. So I got a fire there. There's the front one. Now you can also aim for the nose of the ship, and then there's two fires going. So even when they're bow on, you should still be able to get two fires. Um, now, whenever you're in an enemy battleship, or where, I'm sorry, whenever you're in a battleship and you want to shoot uh, targets that are bow on and whatnot. Where that opens up a whole new can of worms because then you have the overmatch mechanic to talk about. So let me switch switch to a battleship real quick. So before we go into a battle, let's uh, let me explain to you exactly how the overmatch mechanic works. Uh, you look at a ship, go look at its armor value, and you take the millimeters of thickness of the armor plate you're going to be shooting at. So let's say in this case 25 millimeters and you times that by 14.3 so for instance 25 millimeters <clears throat> times that by 14.3 it comes out to 357.5 I believe so you need 358 millimeters of your gun diameter see so like the Fuso's guns for instance are only 356's so the Fuso cannot overmatch 25 millimeters of armor whereas something like the Baron or the war spite, for instance, can overmatch 25 millimeters of armor. Uh, so that's how the overmatch mechanic works. Just take the armor thickness, times that 14.3, and then the millimeter of the gun you're shooting that armor plate with needs to be at least that thick, uh, that diameter to overmatch. And overmatch, what that means, guys, is that when you shoot at an armor plate that is, um, let's say, 25 millimeters, and you have a gun that is 14.3 times greater, the diameter of your, your gun is greater than 14.3 uh, times of the armor value thickness of the armor you're shooting at. And what that means is, regardless of angle, it will always go through the armor. It doesn't matter how he angles the ship. So, for instance, on the Fuso, if a um, war spite, for instance, was to shoot him here in the bow, the shell, regardless of his angle, will come through, it'll hit his bow, and it'll act like it's just a perfectly flat plate. It'll plunge straight through that and go into the citadel down here. Um, so that that's what the overmatch mechanic is. That's how it works. It just makes uh, pretty much a lot of the bow and stern armors pretty much non-existent for um, for some calibers of a gun in the game. It just depends again what you're shooting at uh, and what uh, what your the size of your gun is. As a general rule of thumb. Uh, the three thickness of uh, bow and stern armors in the game you just pay attention to is 25, 27, and 32. Um, most tier 5, 6, 7, perhaps maybe, I think just tier 6 and 7. I think some of the tier 5s have smaller um, uh, bow and stern armors. Their thickness is not as great, but 25 millimeters is a big one you'll see on lots of uh, most of the high tier cruisers, a lot of the mid tier battleships. And that can be overmatched by any gun caliber up to uh, 358. And then you have the 27 millimeters of armor bow ships, which are the Hippers, Des Moines, um, a lot of the higher tier German cruisers. They all have 27 millimeters of armor, and that makes them immune to all 15-inch guns. So Tirpitz, Bismarck, Nisenau, Warspite, Baron, all those, they can't overmatch ships that have 27 millimeters of bow and stern armor and then you have 32 which is on most high tier so tier 8 and up battleships actually it's on all tier 8 up tier 8 and up battleships and uh, 32 millimeters of armor makes you immune to being overmatched by every gun in the entire game except the Yamato uh, so if you look at a Montana or a uh, a Yamato itself they have 32 millimeters of bow and stern the only ship that can overmatch them is the Yamato. So if you do have 32 millimeters of bow and stern armor, you know you're safe from being citadel from the front and the stern from every ship in the game except a Yamato or uh, 
sometimes at extreme ranges you can get plunging fire that'll come through the deck and that could potentially citadel you but in most situations 32 millimeters of armor makes you immune to everything but the Yamato and so that's how the overmatch mechanic works uh, let, me, let me go into a battle and explain it in greater detail and how to overcome it so all that being said what that ends up boiling down to is if you're in a battleship and you have 16 inch guns you can overmatch all 25 millimeter bows and all 27 millimeter bows and you cannot overmatch 32 unless you're in a Yamato uh, so whenever you're facing a Moscow, for instance, or a Nagato, I, I queued up a Nagato because it also has 25 millimeters bow armor, you should be able to overmatch the bow and plunge into the Citadel. And again, you're still having to pray to RNG, <laughs> as you see there. Um, but uh, if you shoot in the right places, you will, like let's say a Moscow, you can still overmatch his bow and uh, his stern armor. But if I were to say, let's shoot at this Montana, I definitely will not be able to overmatch that bow armor. And it should bounce off and do nothing to, the, to that ship. So why don't people always just shoot HE, you say, against, uh, against battleships that are angled? Um, the reason why a lot of people still will keep shooting AP is because... You can still get lots of damage on their superstructure. So their superstructure is generally much, much weaker armor. And uh, so even if you are shooting uh, armor piercing at an angled battleship, as long as you aim high into that superstructure, you should still be able to get reliable damage. Uh, and a lot of people just don't like to switch to a uh, high explosive because he may turn. And the reload times of battleships are just so long that uh, people generally just don't like to uh, to do that. But again, if you are facing a battleship in your battleship that's sharply angled to you, especially the German ones, and it's not, you know, he's running away maybe, or maybe you're running away and he's chasing you, the odds of him going broadside to show you a better target are, are much lower. So uh, it might be prudent then in those situations to switch to HE and hit him with HE because you generally will do more damage with HE plus you could set fires against battleships that are uh, sharply angled to you. Uh, real quick another mechanic I just want to cover real quick is if anybody's ever wondering about how the ramming damage works and how that works. So I have 105.8 thousand hit points right now this Moscow has 65,400 hit points. Now how the ramming mechanic works guys in game is you take the total value of hit points that that ship had when it started the battle. So it doesn't matter if, let's say, I shoot him here in the bow and I overmatch his bow and citadel him. Well, hopefully. Didn't happen that time. But So it doesn't matter that he has less hit points here. When I do ram him, like I'm going to do right now, you'll see it'll still take that 65.4 thousand hit points off of my hit points. It doesn't matter his current hit points. It's all about how much hit points he had when the battle started and so also when you ram somebody or you get rammed by somebody it count the game calculates it kinda like a torpedo explosion so uh, you can get flooding whenever you uh, ram an enemy ship see bam there we are now I'm flooding it's just like a torpedo would hit you think uh, a ship sized torpedo uh, and so that's how the ramming mechanic works so make sure you have that repair party up um, if you do ram or get ran by a ship because I'll, quite often you will get flooding uh, most times as a matter of fact and the reason why I, did, I rammed him here is because I just wanted to reduce my reload so let's say you're facing a um, you're facing a ship that can overmatch your bow let's say you're in a Nagato and you're facing another Nagato for instance they can overmatch each other's bows you have a choice to make you can either go um, bow onto him where you keep just your bow at him or go stern on as you're going away from him and what that's going to do it's going to pre present you as a much smaller target because battleship dispersion is the way it is um, lots of his shells are not going to land where he wants them to land and getting bow on and stern on citadel hits whenever someone is you know at range running away or going towards you is very very difficult uh, that being said it still can be done and uh, so you need to, to work out with yourself what you think is more beneficial. Um, 
Another thing you can do to increase your survivability when you're facing ships that can overmatch you is uh, show more side. Don't go perfectly uh, bow on or perfectly stir on. Show, show your side like this. And uh, what that's going to do is the Nagato, for instance, has a 305 millimeter plate that goes all the way down its side here. And above that, a 229 millimeter plate, which obviously cannot be overmatched by anything. So even though I can overmatch some areas of his ship, by going at a sharp angle like this, if he shoots your hole, it's going to do zero damage. See there? It's not doing any damage at all, not one point, because his armor is thick enough there where I can't overmatch it. Uh, that being said, you still can be overmatched um, down here in his bow and whatnot. And uh, you'll see, you'll, you'll start to take lots of damage. And when my front turrets reload, I should be able to actually citadel him. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so you just got to make a judgment call. Uh, most most players, whenever you run into them in a battle and they're shooting at you, they're going to be shooting right up in here. So angling like that is is definitely going to increase your survivability. But just pro tip, shoot low if you're in a, a ship that can overmatch him. Shoot low into his stern and into his bow whenever they're angled. Um, and you'll generally have more success if he's at close range. And again, at longer range, it's just harder to do that. And you're just better off going for superstructure hits um, and either switching to HE depending on your target or just slinging AP at a superstructure. All right, so now you you got uh, an enemy ships here in your sights in your battleship and or in your cruiser and you want to citadel. Uh, how do you citadel an enemy ship? Well, just aim at the enemy ship. What you want to do is aim at the enemy ship right in the middle under their boilers. Uh, right at the water line. So if you aim right here, this should be uh, a citadel hit when I fire. Six citadels. I almost one shot a Montana. So that's how you're going to citadel him. Uh, you can additionally, with with a lot of ships, uh, their citadels are also under their gun turrets. So pretty much shooting at the water line anywhere from here to here. When they're, about, when they're uh, broadside to you like this, we'll get you a Citadel hit. Bam, right there. And uh, that's how you Citadel ships, guys. Whenever they're in the, And that's going to work for every ship in the game. It doesn't matter if you're in a battleship or a cruiser. Um, anytime you're facing a ship and they're broadside to you, just aim at the waterline, middle of the ship, just like this. Fire, and you'll get Citadels. That's how you get Citadels in the game. And... When you're in a cruiser or a destroyer, uh, pretty much any ship but a battleship, you don't really need to worry about the overmatch mechanic on the targets you're shooting. You just need to worry about the incoming fire, uh, whether they can overmatch your armor or not. But uh, generally, only when you're shooting in a battleship uh, does the uh, overmatch mechanic apply to your gunfire. So you don't really need to worry about that when you're playing a cruiser. Um, just when you're playing a battleship, but you definitely do need to worry about it about what is shooting at you uh, You need to be aware of what your bow and stern armor is and um, Just know at the top of your head what can overmatch you and it's real simple Just look at your armor look at your bow and stern and just remember 25 27 32 you're gonna have one of those three values uh, if you're past I think tier six and um and you'll know instantly off the top of your head what can Citadel you. 25, anything that has 381 milliliters up. And then uh, 27 makes you immune to that. And then if you have 32, nothing but a Yamato can Citadel you. Uh, so next thing with gunnery, guys. This I, I see asked a lot. Do you shoot destroyers? Do you shoot them with armor piercing? Or do you shoot them with HE? This is, this is a big debate. Now, I'll tell you, in a battleship, most of the times, you're going to be running around with armor-piercing loaded. Uh, please, guys, pro tip, definitely, don't be one of those battleship players that do nothing but shoot HE. I promise you, AP is more effective in most situations. So you're definitely going to want to have HE loaded most of the time. I mean, sorry, <laughs> AP loaded most of the time, not HE. The HE is, is only the round you want to switch to. In certain situations. So against the destroyer, that great debate. Do you shoot HE? Do you shoot AP? Shoot what you have loaded. Um, quite often in a battleship, if I'm shooting at a destroyer, I'm going to shoot whatever's in my gun tubes at the moment. 
Um, now, a lot of people like to to stay with H with armor piercing and, and never switch to HE against uh, destroyers. And so this is how this is going to work. I'm going to fire at the gearing with with armor piercing, just one turret. And at this angle, my shells should just go straight through the ship and not do a whole lot of damage, because you're getting what's called overpins. So there, I hit him, but I only did a thousand damage. And the reason why I did a thousand damage is because my shells overpinned. See there, only two thousand damage. And so the armor piercing rounds, they have so much penetration and the destroyer is so small that it just goes clean through the ship and there's just not enough ship there um, for to give your fuse time to, uh, to explode inside the ship. And so that's overpins. And in those cases, it is gonna be better to switch to HE. So if I know there's if if I know the only target I'm going to be shooting at within the next few minutes, let's say I'm in a, a part of the map where there's just destroyers around, I will switch to HE to shoot destroyers in that situation. Uh, because if you shoot HE at a broadside destroyer, it's not going to overpin, and you'll still get full damage. Plus, you'll actually wreck their ship. You'll break a whole bunch of modules. Bam! See, I took out his torpedo tubes, took out his propulsion. Uh, and I did much, much more damage. And uh, so that that's that's how you're going to choose what you're going to want to shoot. If you have nothing else available and you have time to switch, by all means, switch to HE. You will do more damage against destroyers with HE when they're when they're uh, broadside to you like this. Now, I'm sure if you've ever playing a destroyer though, and you come up against a battleship, and uh, he has armor piercing loaded, and he shoots at you, and he just explodes your ship in one shot. Now here is where armor piercing is more effective versus a destroyer than high explosive. Anytime you can catch a destroyer where they're not perfectly broadside to you like that and they're at an angle, uh, what that's going to do is you're, there's, there's, if your ship has to pass through the enemy ship like this where there's an angle, there's more of the ship for the shell to pass through. And so your armor piercing shells won't get over pins in those situations and will get full penetrating hits. And in these situations, uh, armor piercing is far, far superior to uh, high explosive. That's when you can potentially one shot destroyers and whatnot. Um, so what you want to do is wait for a destroyer. What I like to do if I have armor piercing loaded is I like to wait for the destroyer to either come out of a turn or start a turn. And you want to catch him where he's not um, where he's not perfectly broadside, but at a slight angle. Because again, if you do that, that's what's going to give your armor piercing enough ship to pass through to arm and do full damage. So again, anytime you can catch a destroyer at an angle, armor piercing can be more effective than HE. But again, uh, me personally, I like to shoot HE if I have the chance to swap. Um, or I will shoot armor piercing on my first salvo and then have it queued up to switch. Because, um, again, it is most important just to get that shot off on him, regardless of what you have loaded, um, to you know try to get him dead. Because nothing's more of a threat to you in a battleship than a destroyer at close range. All right, now to cover one of the hardest skills for new players to master in the game, and that is leading your target and um, just properly shooting moving targets. So you need to account for um, to your your horizontal and vertical uh, lines. So just whenever you're shooting at a target, think of your your vertical and your horizontal. Um, and you need to to aim based on where they'll be when your shells land on both vertical and horizontal. Uh, so let's say you hear this Moskova. This is one of those skills, guys, that really is going to be, uh, you know, just improved upon by gameplay. It's going to take a take a while to get used to, um, but uh, it, it it really is something that that is, is going to take a bit to get used to. Um, so one of the things you can do is download Aslan's mod pack. You see here, right there under my uh, crosshairs, it shows the enemy ship. Uh, in what direction he's moving. So in there you see that he's moving towards me so I want to aim a little low. Um, another way, you could just tell by looking at the ship so you don't have to have the mod pack. Um, you could just tell by looking at the ship. 
Another tip, guys, to judge how fast an enemy ship is going, if you look at the enemy ship, look at their smoke. If they're going at full speed, you'll see their smoke has a nice big uh, backward plume like how mine is here. Uh, and if they're going slower, you'll see that their smokestack, like see how this guy, his smokestack is not, uh, he didn't have a long rooster tail there. That means he's not going very fast. And so that's going to give you a good indication of, of how to aim, um, you know, based on how fast he's going. Um, this is one of the more difficult things to describe how to do well. I've watched a lot of guides on it myself, and people say, look at the, um, you know, look at the bars and count and do all that. I don't do any of that. I, I do it all by feel, just by, um, you know, by experience. And so this is a difficult skill for me to explain. Um, but generally what I do is I know the ship, so I know the top speed of a Moskova. I know it can go, you know, like 35 knots, something like that, 32 knots. And um, and then I just remember at what range, you know, how far ahead of him I need to aim based on his speed. So I, I look at his smoke, see how, you know, if he's got a long rooster tail going off or not. I look at his smoke and then uh, just based on his range, that tells me how far ahead of him I need to aim. Um, and really, it's just going to take practice, guys. That That's all there is to it. You can watch all the guides in the world about people saying, you know, count your little ticks on your, your crosshair and da-da-da-da-da. I don't know. If you're spending time counting your crosshairs, you're spending too much time not shooting, and um, I just don't like it, so I don't do it. Uh, you just you just end up getting a feel after playing for a while. And, and you'll know... Um, how far to lead them but again how I do it personally I just look at the enemy ship I look at see if he had, like this guy I can tell he's not moving because he has no no smoke going out at all and uh, just based on his range and that's how I how I determine where to shoot uh, it doesn't really matter uh, any target in the, it's pretty much the same thing and and of course uh, some general ranges for most ships you can hit battleships no matter how they're maneuvering at any range cruisers Against experienced cruiser players, it becomes very difficult to hit them past 15 kilometers. And um, against experienced destroyers, it becomes difficult to hit them past about 12 kilometers, 10 maybe, depending on what you're in. Uh, unless you are in a Russian cruiser, they have hyper-velocity guns, um, and it's uh, it's much easier to to hit destroyers at long range with them. But um, yeah, again, I apologize if I'm not perfectly clear on how to properly lead targets. Again, look at their smokestack. Uh, know how long the flight time of your shells and your shell characteristics, how long generally uh, it takes to get to that range. And um, as far as the vertical up and down, um, your aiming point with that, if the ship is going away from you, you're going to need to aim a little higher to get the citadels. If they're going towards you, you're going to aim need to aim lower to get citadels. And uh, that's how that works. So this guy, he's moving very slow and away from me. I want to aim about there. Now he had too big of an angle. I wouldn't, I would, I couldn't settle him just because of the angle he was at. But that was about right. Um, if he was more broadside, I should have, that should have uh, citadel him. And again, uh, download that mod pack. You can see that little uh, little icon there below my crosshairs, and that will give you. Um, a, a better indication exactly of what the enemy ship's angle is compared to your ship. Now here's a Des Moines. He's moving slightly away. Bam. And that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. Um, with that being said, I highly recommend anybody, if you're having trouble shooting, um, download, again, download Aslan's Mod Pack. And one of the things to make sure you check in there is make sure you check enable training rooms and just go into a training room guys with different ships and uh, you can make the ships armed you can make them unarmed where they just run around like this uh, you can do all that and just practice shooting for a bit uh, against different targets at different speeds um, you could set up different cats where they won't all cluster in, into this cap like this you know set domination mode and they'll all just run around the map all crazy like everywhere and um you can really practice your shooting uh, whenever you uh, go into a training room, guys. So if you if you ever have problems, really, 
check out that training room. It really can help you a great deal. Um, I really can't say that enough. So anyways, this is Ironhide X. Thank you very much for watching my guide. Um, so a new thing I'm doing, guys, is I am streaming now. I'm streaming live. If you uh, check out my YouTube channel, you'll see me streaming live here on YouTube. And uh, anytime I'm streaming live, um, just let me know in chat what uh, what ship you want to see me play. I definitely take requests from everybody watching. So if you want me to see you play a, um, a Donskoy, for instance, or a different Russian cruiser, just let me know in chat. And I'll, I'll for sure, I'll queue it up for you and you can watch me play it live. You can see how I do it live because, of course, YouTubers, when they're recording videos, um, all of their videos are taken off of replays and whatnot. And, uh, of course, YouTubers are not generally going to show you replays where they went and messed up and they did, you know, 5,000 damage and died terribly right there at the beginning of the battle. So, if you want to see how I do it live, uh, by all means, check out my stream. Now, I also, I dual stream. Uh, if I'm streaming on YouTube, I'm also streaming on... Um, Twitch, and I'll put a link to my Twitch channel down below. It's twitch.tv slash ironhidex, and like I said, if I'm streaming on one, I'm streaming on the other, and I'll put a link again down below. If you like my videos, guys, you'll see a pop-up here at the end of the video on the screen. Please click subscribe to my channel. It helps me a great deal. Thank you, everybody, very much for watching, and I will see you next time.